using the older one is the power reduction. The D muting the sine of M plus sine of M, sine of M, sine of M. Interesting. Interesting. It's definitely something which I've never seen before. Right. I've I've seen it before, but that definitely something I never covered when I was learning it or teaching it really. But you can do it that way I showed you. Yeah, yeah. That it's just sometimes it makes a little bit less sense when it's really high value. Right, exactly. Thank you, Rocky. Yeah. Thank you. Now he expects us to know that one and the power reduction one for the midterm next week. And the what reduction? Power reduction. Power reduction? It's just cosine of x, cosine squared of x is the same thing as one minus cosine plus cosine of x. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. I, I would call that the half angle formula, but yeah. And it's the same thing. So right, yeah. I've heard power reduction before, that's why I use I have not heard that before, but that makes sense. Yeah. Another way would be that I should say half angle was this way. The way I understand it. Um, there's a handout I'll give both of you since I have it with me. Um, this is kind of a, an integration flow chart, for lack of a better word. Um, it kind of describes, like, if you see a certain kind of thing, what should I do to try and see what method of integration makes the most sense? So we won't talk about it just yet because we don't really have all the kind of methods available to us yet, or at least we in this class we don't yet. But um, it's worth looking at. Paper. Don't put my own thing on top of Um, just a reminder, in case you didn't know, no class on Monday. Uh, but please, yeah, please follow up. Follow the attendance form. But the reminder I was actually give you was there's no class on Monday. It's President's Day. So don't be here. I won't be here. You all have a nice, long, relaxing weekend. Thanks for getting started. It's 110. So, recording, yes. Let's talk about integration by parts. So, can see I can see my graphs from last time, like the thing I was revolving around, but was it the weird kind of arc? I can kind of still see it here on the paper. It's kind of funny. Um, so that's not a 21, not a 12. 21B workshop. The date is the 17th of February. All right. Um, so integration by parts. Often abbreviated, it's just IBP. So what I would say about integration by parts is typically we only use integration by parts when we see what we call a mixture of things. So I haven't really talked about this terminology yet, but um, I'll say it right now. So we typically use this on a quote mixture intervals after we've tried to use sub.
So when I say a mixture, here's what I mean. A mixture of usually two, could be more, two or more types of functions. The types being logarithmic, algebraic, inverse trig. Um, oops, I wrote this in the wrong order, that's fine. Um, trig and exponential. So logarithmic and self-explanatory. Algebraic, when I say algebraic, I just mean like powers of X. So algebraic is like, you know, X squared or the square root of one minus X cubed or things like that, where you don't really have any other kinds of functions showing up. Um, inverse trig, trig, I think are both explanatory, what they are. And exponentials like e to the X or T to the X. So we use either in relation to part two substitution when we typically see a mixture of things. So for example, here's a mixture, the integral of X squared times E to the X cubed. It's got an algebraic term and a exponential term. So if I see a mixture like this, I'm first gonna look for a potential U substitution. And here I see one. I can see that I'm gonna let U equal X cubed. And then my du is going to be 3x squared dx. I like to isolate the x squared dx. So I'm going to say that one third du equals x squared dx. And then I'm going to rewrite my integral as one third du e to the u. And then it's just e to the u. Or I should say then it's just one third e to the u. Of course, I've written this in the weirdest place which is going to be one third e to the x cubed plus c. So I just want to stress, when you see a mixture of functions, usually the first thing you want to try to look for is, is there a good u substitution? And sometimes there will be, or sometimes there won't be. So when there isn't a good u substitution, the next thing we look for is trying to integration by parts. So for example, the integral of x e to the 2x, or the integral of x squared cosine of 3x. These are both problems that would be doable using integration by parts. Um, I'll just point out right here, I see an algebraic term times an exponential term. Here I see an algebraic term, or what I like to call any power of your variable, times a trigon trigonometric term. Those are mixtures. Um, I will point out, just because I know you both are aware, Kind of the difference between U sub versus integration by parts is that when you're looking at a potential U sub, you'll usually see kind of like a function of a function or the potential U choice stuck inside the other function. Whereas integration by parts really looks more like the straight multiplication, like you're multiplying this function times the other function. So if we look back at that previous example, you can kind of see this X cubed stuck inside the E to the whatever. Whereas here, we just got X times E to the two X. We've got X squared times, right? There's nothing kind of, there isn't really a, a composition of functions there so much. So integration by parts comes from the product rule. It's kind of neat, I think. Um, so U substitution really is kind of like undoing the chain rule and integration by parts isn't exactly undoing the product rule, but it certainly comes from the product rule. So here's where it comes from, or here's how it comes from the product rule. Comes from the product rule. So let's, and for some reason, I don't know who chose letters U and V when they did this however long ago, but someone chose U and V and we use them all the time. And of course, the two letters that are really easy to, if you're not careful, look similar to each other. So make sure you're careful when you write your U's and your V's because they look different. So if you take the derivative of U times V using the product rule, you get U times the derivative of V, which I'm gonna write as DV, plus V times the derivative of U, which I'm gonna write as DU. And now we're going to integrate both sides. So if I integrate both sides, well, the antiderivative of the derivative is just the function you started with. So the antiderivative uv prime is just, sorry, u times v prime is just u times v. And I'm going to integrate both of these things. I'm going to get the integral of u times dv 
plus the integral of v times du. And then we're going to solve for one of them. It doesn't actually really matter which one you solve for, but we typically isolate the u times dv one. So we're going to say that the integral of u times dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v times du. This is the formula for integration by parts. Um, I don't know if it's my coworker who came up with it or she learned it somewhere else, but she has always said this to herself as ultra violet super voodoo. And it's hard to forget. So when you do my parts, you're doing the ultraviolet super voodoo. UV, ultraviolet, super is the integral symbol, and voodoo is the VDU. Kind of silly, but it works. One sec. So the point here, what we're going to do is we're going to start with an integral that we're going to call the integral of u times dv. And we're going to make a choice for u and a choice for dv so that when we rewrite the integral as u times v minus the integral of v du, the integral of v times du is supposed to be something that's easier to anti-differentiate than the integral of u times dv. So we're, re we're rewriting it. We're still going to get an integral, but it's going to be an easier integral. I tend to get sexy. You can't forget I tend to get sexy. Yeah, it is. I mean, it is. and then, you know, I got that from a student. They're like, oh, yeah. So, you know, I went, it, makes, it makes me wonder, like, who was the first person? Probably never actually know, but it's kind of neat. So let's look at this problem here, this x e to the 2x. So typically, there's a couple of ways we think about how we choose what is going to be what in your integral. Um, usually, you're going to choose u to be something in this order, which I was trying to write before, but I failed to. First, if you have it, you're going to choose u to be a logarithmic function. If you don't have a logarithmic function, you're going to choose u to be an inverse trig. If you don't have an inverse trig, you're going to choose u to be an algebraic term or any power of x. If you don't have any power, you're going to choose u to be a trig. And then you almost never choose u to equal to e to the x term. So in this particular example, I don't have a log, I don't have an inverse trig, but I do have an algebraic term. So I'm gonna choose u to equal the x to the first, my algebraic term. Yeah, and I'll factor right now. Log, inverse trig, algebraic or algebra, or any power of x, trig, and then exponential. And you, there are some examples, I don't actually know them off the top of my head, but there are examples of things where you actually do choose u to be e to the x, but they're, or something with e to the x in it, but they're few and far between. So when you're doing this process, you typically choose u to be, we, I usually choose u first, and then after you've chosen u, dv is everything else. You have no choices. Once you choose u, you have a choice there. U times dv has to be the entire integral. A couple things about u and dv. Your choice for u should get quote unquote simpler when you differentiate it. And it does, right? The derivative of x to a power becomes a lesser power, which is, you could say simpler. And then on the flip side, dv should be something that is easy to anti-differentiate. It shouldn't get more complicated when you anti-differentiate it. E to the x is kind of the best example of that. When you anti-differentiate e to the x, it's still e to the x. Sine and cosine are also good examples because when you anti-differentiate sine or cosine, you essentially just get the other one back and they're pretty much the same function. Here, our v, which is the antiderivative of e to the 2x is gonna be one half e to the 2x. And now we're gonna rewrite our integral the integral of x times e to the 2x dx, the integral of our u times dv. We're just going to rewrite it as our u times v. So x times 1 half e to the 2x minus the integral of v, 1 half e to the 2x times du.
I'll mention here, we're not actually plugging in U and V. We're just using U and V to represent the things we've actually looked to do. But we're actually plugging in what U is equal to and what D and V is equal to in terms of X or whatever your variable happens to be. So now if we look at this, this remaining integral is something we know how to integrate. This is going to equal, well, let's see, I'm going to simplify this just a tiny bit and write this as one half e to the, sorry, one half times x times e to the 2x minus one half times the integral of e to the 2x is another e to the 2x divided by 2. Let's see. And that is our answer. And if we took the derivative of this, not that I want to, we would get back the original function we started with, which is, should always be true of any antiderivative you find. If you take the derivative and simplify it out, you'll get back the function you started with. Question? Forever. Um, there might be examples that could go on forever, but I mean, typically, Yeah, but the thing is, you don't well. But well, it depends on what it's, but it depends on what you have it with. So, well, for example, um, if we had something like, gosh, come on, maybe we had something like the integral, say, x cubed times natural log of x dx. Again, I'm always going to first do a quick mental check just to see, is there a U sub that might make sense? There isn't. Letting U equal natural log of X, my DU is one over X. I don't see a one over X in my integral, so that's probably not a great choice. So I'm going to try integration by parts. Right, I have a mixture. I have an algebra thing times a log thing. And according to my light acronym, I should let U equal the log thing. So light says U is gonna equal the natural log of X. And then once I've chosen U, DV has automatically been decided for me. DV has to be everything else in my integral, including the DX. The DV is gonna be X cubed times DX. And then the rest of it is just the process of finding the derivative of u. So du is going to be 1 over x dx. And v, the antiderivative of x cubed, is going to be x to the fourth over 4. So now here's what happens. Um, I don't think you don't have to write the integral again. I like to write the integral again. So the integral of x cubed times natural log of x dx is going to be ultraviolet super voodoo uv natural log of x times x to the fourth over four minus the integral of v du, which is x to the fourth over four times one over x dx. Now I have to stop here for a moment to mention, I've seen too many people do this integral wrong too many times to not say how I've seen it go wrong. For some reason, people really like to look at this and be like, oh, the integral is x to the fifth over 20 times the natural log of x. But we can't just integrate each part separately. That's Otherwise, we wouldn't need the product rule. Right? If you can just integrate each, you know, things multiplied together by integrating each one of them and then multiplying the results together, we would have not needed to talk about this. But we do because you can't just do that. The product rule is a thing. So fortunately, x to the fourth over four times one over x simplifies really nicely. And we can just rewrite this as x to the fourth times natural log of x all over four minus one fourth times the integral of x to the fourth divided by x is x cubed. And we for sure know how to integrate x cubed. Um, it's going to be x to the fourth over four. And there's our answer. Um, typically, no one should be asking you questions that go on kind of forever, right? I, or at least not without some sort of indication that you might see that kind of pattern. I wouldn't say that. So, so what I would actually say is probably the majority of actual functions out there are not, don't have a nice elementary function as their integral. 
we are looking, I mean, there's a lot of functions to do, but in the infinitude of possible functions that are out there, most of them don't have a nice antiderivative that we can find. We have a large swath, or you know, we have a swath of them that we look at because they can be antidifferentiated, but there's plenty of functions that don't have a nice antiderivative. Um, let's look at this next example. The integral of the natural log of x squared over x dx. So before I jump to doing integration by parts, I should look to see if there's a u sub because this is a mixture and there is a good u sub here, right? If I let u equal the natural log of x, my du is just one over x dx. And this is exactly gonna become the integral of just u squared times du. Which is just gonna be u cubed over three plus c, which is just gonna be the natural log of x quantity cubed over three plus c. Yeah, of course. No, that's all right. Like, I'm going to take physics. Sure. sure. And I don't know how the co class works because I'm going to be busy during the co class. Mm -hmm. So I wanted or to. Or the physics co class or the physics co class? Okay. Um, and I don't know if Casey does YouTube videos or if I have to register for that. Is, is Casey the one doing the class? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure Casey does do YouTube videos, but you can, you could really ask him. Like, like, not that you're not welcome to ask me. I just don't actually know if he, if he, I feel like he records this stuff and posts it. It's on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I would also go talk to him. He's very friendly and he would certainly answer your questions and let you know how he's going to run things. Um, yeah. I didn't realize I thought Duff was the one doing that one. I sort of like stuff. Or maybe they're both. I actually don't know. I think Duff is doing the nine. Oh, okay. Series, and then okay. I'm taking the seven series. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I made the assumption you're doing the nine series just because it usually goes with the 21 series. No, I'm actually, I'm actually in CBS. Not, okay. Yeah. I'm not an engineer. Interesting. Next. I can take 17 or are you done? Okay. okay, cool. Right on. Cool beans. All right, so um yeah, it's probably way easier to take 21A and 21 b than take the 17 series, I gotta say. It's so long. It is, and it's so it's wildly different. It's a, like 17 C is so incredibly different than 21 C is. It's funny that they're both calculus classes. Um let's look at sorry, we had we had, there was one problem in, in the beginning there that yeah. So the word of warning is just to be on the lookout for U substitution, right? It's good to not always assume that our problem is integration by parts when we have a mixture. So here, again, kind of like the previous problem, I see a mixture of things. I have an algebraic thing times a trig thing. But before I start going down the road of integration by parts, I'm noticing, oh, it looks like there's a reasonable U substitution here. I can let u be the stuff that's inside the sine function. And then my du is just going to be 10x dx. Or 1 tenth du is just going to equal x dx. So right there, there's my 1 tenth du. And this integral just becomes the integral of 1 tenth times sine of u du. What's the antiderivative sign? Negative cosine. Negative cosine? Yeah. So we get negative one tenth cosine of u plus c, which is negative one tenth cosine of, a little scary, 5x squared plus c. Um, let's look back at that problem that we started with that I wrote down in the beginning, which was what was it? x squared cosine 3x. Okay, so this one definitely does look like it's integration by parts. Like there isn't a good choice for you whose du is also in there. Um, so I'm thinking integration by parts, and I'm going to let u equal x squared. And then dv already chosen for me. It's cosine of 3x times dx. My du is 2x. My v is the antiderivative, which is one third sine of 3x. So when I rewrite my integral, I get u times v. So x squared times one third times sine of three x. 
minus the integral of v times du, which is one third sine of three x times two x dx. Which you'll notice is still a mixture. It's still an x times an x to a power times the sine of three x, which means we're gonna have to do integration by parts again. Now, some people kind of do something slightly different. It depends on what you want to do. One way you could do this is to let like dv be sine of 3x and u equal two thirds x. I personally prefer to factor out the constants, even though that might actually not be the easier way to do it. I don't know. Now I'm kind of debating whether, whether I'd rather do them. It's probably actually easier not to do that now that I think about it. Sometimes it's time. So you could factor out the two thirds, but I actually think in retrospect, it's easier not to do that. So let's not do that. So let's say we're going to let, and I guess I would probably rewrite this just so I can see it a little bit more nicely. I'm going to say I have a integral of two thirds X times a sine of three X. Yes. And for my second integration, my parts, I'm going to let U equal two thirds X and dv is going to be sine of 3x dx. du is 2 thirds dx, and v is the antiderivative of sine of 3x, which is negative 1 third cosine of 3x. So then we do it again. We get the whole thing. It gets to be kind of lengthy writing this all out. x squared times 1 third sine of 3x minus u times v is going to be two thirds X times negative one third cosine of three X minus the integral of V du, which is negative one third cosine of three X times two thirds DX. And now we're almost done. We can totally integrate this constant times cosine of three X. Question. You're right, I should. And that's probably why I actually do choose to pull out the two thirds because it's, it's easier to not miss that fact if you pull out a constant as well. Thank you. So yeah, so we should have minus all of u v minus the integral of v du. Yeah. So then we're gonna get, let's write this as x squared times sine of three x all over three. And then this is a minus times a minus, so it's going to be plus two ninths times x times cosine of three x. Sorry, I summed them right one way, the other way. And then I've got minus a minus a minus, so minus the integral of two ninths cosine of three x, which is finally going to be okay, one third x squared sine of three x plus two ninths x cosine of three x minus two over 27 sine of three x, because I know I'm gonna divide by a three there. Whew. That was terrible. Yeah, question. Yeah, I was, I was about to say, this is a great example of why the tabular method is excellent. So let me stress a lot. There are only three types of integrals you can use the tabular method for. So tabular only works for the following types of integrals. The integral of a polynomial times e to a constant times x or a polynomial times cosine of a constant times x, or a polynomial times sine of a constant times x. Here are the things that have to kind of be true for this tabular method to work. Your choice for u, which is going to be the polynomial, usually it's just x to a power, but that polynomial is the more general actual true thing. Whatever you're choosing for u, its derivative eventually has to be zero if you keep taking repeated derivatives. And polynomials are really the only kinds of functions that if you keep taking their derivatives, eventually the derivative is zero. 
Yes, you heard me correctly. Just polynomials, not square roots or any other stupid powers of x. Because again, like I said, the derivative, if you keep taking repeated derivatives, eventually has to get to zero. Right, same reason. So I really do sincerely mean a polynomial and all that means positive, I should say, non-negative integer powers of x. Correct. So P of so P of X is something like C N X to the N plus C N minus one X to the N minus one plus dot 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 plus all the way down to C one X plus C naught. In reality, usually it's like usually your polynomial is something like X to the N or X to the third or X squared, right? It's usually just X to a power. It's not usually more complicated. Like one half x yes. So polynomial, the only condition on polynomials is that the coefficients are real numbers and the powers are non-negative integer numbers. Okay, so Correct. That would not work. It's still a polynomial. Yep. So the reason, and then the reason we need the other part, the part that's going to be the dv part to be either e to the a times x or cosine of ax or sine of ax is because those are really the only three functions whose antiderivatives just kind of cycle. The antiderivative e to the ax is e to the ax divided by a. And then the antiderivative of that is e to the ax divided by another factor of a. And you just keep dividing by another factor of a. The same is true for sine and cosine. They're a little more complicated because they change signs. Like the antiderivative of cosine of 2x is sine of 2x divided by 2. And the antiderivative of that is negative cosine of 2x divided by 2, and so on and so on. But they don't really get more complicated in some way that you can't anti differentiate them at some point. That's why the other trick functions don't Right. That's why the other trick functions don't work because their antiderivatives eventually get too complicated if you keep doing them. So the way I usually write this is I'm trying to integrate something like we just did, like x squared times cosine of 3x dx. The way I usually do it is I like to make my u column and my dv column. So u is going to be my x squared. And then I'm going to take all the derivatives until I get to zero. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, the derivative of 2x is 2, the derivative of 2 is 0. And you do want to write the 0 because that's going to tell you how many rows of this thing you need for your dv. So then dv is the rest. It's cosine of 3x. I'm not going to write the dx because I don't want to. And we usually don't want to do it this way. And then I'm going to anti-differentiate on, on that column. So the anti of cosine of 3x is sine of 3x divided by 3. The anti of that is negative cosine of 3x divided by 9. And the anti of that is negative, negative? Yeah, sine of 3x divided by 27. And then what we do is we take the upper leftmost u and we multiply it by the thing that's diagonally down to the right. And then we do that the same. We just keep doing that. And then it's plus x squared times sine of 3x over 3 minus 2x times negative cosine of 3x over 9 plus 2 times negative sine of 3x over 27. So it's just a plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus until you get to the end. So this integral is equal to positive x squared times sine of 3x over 3 minus 2x times negative cosine of 3x over 9 plus 2 times negative sine of 3x over 27 plus c. Normally, if I was doing this, I would fix the signage along the way. But I wanted to write it like this just to point out it's really plus this times this, minus this times this, plus this times this. And then if I was fixing the signs, I would write this as one third x squared times sine of 3x minus minus is plus two ninths x cosine of 3x minus two twenty sevenths sine of 3x plus c, which should be exactly the same as what we got before if I didn't make any mistakes. And it is. 
Question. It should be totally fine. Um, some people, I don't know. It, it's a totally valid method of integration. Um, so you might want to ask your professor if it's okay if you use it. Um, usually, usually if people want to use it, they'll kind of say, or they'll say you're allowed to use it. But it so I, what I would say is, if you're being asked to do like x squared times e to the x or x squared times i, like that's reasonable to expect students not to use tabular. But really, after x squared, after that, just so much work to keep doing the re repeated enrichment parts. So, yeah. And then, um, what you mean by positive, negative, positive? That's the sign that comes after that term, right? No, no. So, so it was, it was literally. So let me do this here. It was plus x squared times sine of 3x over 3. Oh, okay. And it was minus 2x times negative cosine of 3x over 9. And it was plus like that. Yeah. So that's how that works. And then you can kind of apply it to lots of examples. Well, not lots, to a very select few examples. Um, but they do come up relatively frequently. So for example, if someone said, you know, what's the integral of x cubed e to the negative x dx, instead of doing integration by parts three times, I'm gonna make my u column, that's x cubed. And oh, I know what I want to run some Sorry, one more thing here. I just wanna write, you know, on the u side, we are differentiating as we usually do with the U thing. And on the V side, or on the DV side, we are anti-differentiating. Which I think is relatively clear here, but sometimes with the E to the X ones especially, it can be not 100% clear that you're actually doing the anti-derivative instead of the derivative, but you are. So for this one here, I will let U equal X cubed, and then all my derivatives are gonna be three X squared, 6x, 6, 6, and 0. And my dv is going to be e to the negative x. And the antiderivative of that is e to the negative x divided by negative 1, but that's the same as multiplying by negative 1. So it's going to be negative e to the negative x, and then positive e to the negative x, and then negative e to the negative x, and then positive e to the negative x. And then same deal. So without doing all those steps, our integral here is going to be negative x cubed e to the negative x minus 3x squared e to the negative x minus 6x e to the negative x minus 6 e to the negative x plus c. One times. Okay, yeah, we'll go off that. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that, and that, and that. I don't want to do that next, though. Yeah, let's do one of those. So I feel like this is a good time to kind of, yeah, we should do that one next. So let's say, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to those other examples, but I want to do this next one. So we need a whole page for this next one. At least. So there's another style of interval that kind of comes up frequently and it's very much its own thing. So this is kind of integration by parts with a twist. Um, we'll do the integral of e to the three x times cosine of two x dx. I will say the way we solve this problem is similar to another problem that I like a lot, which is the integral of secant cubed, which we'll probably talk about at some point once we talk about, once we get to the tree integral stuff. Um, so here you can make, here technically you could actually make either choice for U and for DV. Now I'm gonna follow my light acronym and I don't have a log, I don't have an inverse trig, I don't have an algebra term, so I'm gonna let U equal the trigonometric thing. So here we're gonna let U equal cosine of 2x, and then my dv is going to be the rest, which is e to the 3x dx. 
I will point out though, that you can make the opposite choice. You can let u equal e to the 3x here and dv be cosine of 2x dx. It's fine to do it either way as long as you are consistent in what you do. Meaning, when we do the second integration by parts, we have to make the same type of choice. You let u equal the trig thing here, you have to let u equal the trig thing in the next one. You let u equal the e to the x thing here, you have to let u equal the e to the x thing. Let's write down the rest of this. Um, my du is negative sine of 2x times 2 dx. My V is one third E to the three X. So now we're gonna write this as UV. So one third E to the three X times cosine of two X minus the integral of V DU one third E to the three X times. So instead of writing negative sine of two X times two over here, I would probably pull the negative out in front and write it as plus sine of two X times two dx. Yeah. Yeah. So so usually I mean so so typically there's not it, it's usually like x to a higher power times sine or cosine or e to the x. So usually we mostly see repeated integration of parts in ones that could be done tabular. There are some exceptions to that. Um, like, for example, the natural log of x quantity squared definitely does require repeated enrichment parts and it's not tabular. Um, but there are kind of, there are, there are not a lot of ones other than the tabular ones that really do require any repeated enrichment parts. This is an exception as well, but it's not tabular. Um, so, yeah. So I would probably, I would probably choose I kind of want to do the other thing I was trying to do before. Here I'm not, here I don't have that minus sign problem. So I could let for this next generation of parts. No, I'm going to do it. Who am I, who am I kidding? One third e to the three x cosine of two x. And then let's factor out the two thirds. I have an integral of e to the three x times sine of two x dx. Now we're going to do integration of parts again. We're going to let u equal sine of two x and dv equal e to the 3x one more time, dx. And du is cosine of 2x times 2, dx. And v is e to the 3x divided by 3. So if we write this down, we've got 1 third e to the 3x times cosine of 2x plus 2 thirds times my ultraviolet super beauty, which is going to be u times v. So e to the 3x over 3 times sine of 2x minus the integral of v du, which is e to the 3x over 3 times 2 cosine of 2x dx. Now, I'm going to multiply this out, and I'm going to, and I'm going to make it really kind of extra, maybe explicit about what's going to happen here. This is all of this is what this integral is equal to. So this integral of e to the 3x cosine of 2x dx is equal to 1 third e to the 3x times cosine of 2x. I'm going to distribute the 2 thirds and say 2 thirds times 1 third is 2 ninths e to the 3x times sine of 2x. And then I'm going to multiply the 2 thirds here and factor out the other 2 thirds to get a minus 4 ninths integral of e to the 3x cosine of 2x. And you might notice that in the integral of e to the 3x cosine of 2x, I have it equal to something with e to the integral of e to the 3x times cosine of 2x. So what we do, kind of this is the here's the twist. We're going to add this to both sides. So a whole integral plus four ninths of an integral is how much of an integral? Not two times, it would be two times if, so if we didn't have these weird coefficients, like if this was just an e to the x and the cosine of x, you would get double it. But here, since I have a one of a thing plus four ninths of a thing, I'm just adding the coefficients. And one plus four ninths is gonna give us 13 ninths. So we're gonna have that 13 ninths times the integral of e to the three x cosine of two x, dx is equal to one third e to the three x cosine of two x 
plus two ninths e to the three x times sine of two x. And then finally, multiplying both sides by nine thirteenths, we get that the integral of e to the three x cosine of two x dx is equal to nine thirteenths times, I can fit this in and promise, one third e to the three x cosine of two x plus two ninths e to the, I should have factored out e to the three x, e to the three x sine of two x plus c. And that is always what happens when you integrate e to, so, so this is, this is generally true, or generally the way we do it, or anything that looks like e to the a times x times cosine of b times x, or the integral of e to the a times x times sine of b times x. This is the general way that this always works. So if you see the integral of e to the x times sine of 5x, you'll know that you have to do this integration of parts twice. And then the thing you're trying to find comes back up again and you add it back over to the other side. And then you divide by the coefficient and then you get your answer. It kind of feels like you didn't actually integrate it, right? To me, it feels that way, or at least it used to. It seems what? It is. But this is a totally valid answer that does not have the integral in it at the end. If you take the derivative of this, it'll for sure equal that. Kind of cool. All right, let's go back to where we were before. So there's some other weird functions that we integrate using um, integration by parts, like the integral of inverse tangent. You're welcome. You too. See you on Wednesday. This is an example of a function that might not look like it's an integration by parts problem because it doesn't really look like a mixture, but it is because, so here's what I'll say. Technically, the dx part can count for like your algebraic term or for your power of x, it's like x to the zero. Kind of dumb, but it works. So here, we're gonna use integration by parts and we're gonna let u equal the only thing that we can choose u equal to, which is the arc tangent. And then my dv is everything that's left, which is just dx. And then our du is the derivative of our tangent of x, which is one over one plus x squared, dx. And our v is equal to the antiderivative of one, which is x. Um, I'll point out because I think it's, so we're gonna, we're probably gonna talk about trig substitution in the near future. And there's, it's nice to kind of know that when you see one plus x squared, that goes with tangent. I'm not going to explain that fully right now because it, there's more to it than that. But really, I will say this more again later, the derivatives of the inverse trig functions kind of hold the key to knowing what trig substitution to do later. So we'll leave that there. I'll say it again later, but I just want to point out it's kind of nice to know. Um, so it's good. So you definitely do want to know the derivative of arc tangent and arc sine and arc secant. All right. So, but now we're just going to do the integration by parts formula. So the integral of arc tangent of x is going to equal u times v, so x times arc tangent of x, minus the integral of v times du. And then if we look at our integral of v times du, which is the integral of x over one plus x squared, we can do a u substitution. So I would probably off to the side say, oh, the integral of x over one plus x squared, I'm gonna let u equal the one plus x squared. And my du is gonna equal two x dx. So my du over two is gonna equal x dx. So then I can rewrite this integral as, the integral of one half du over u. And the integral of that's gonna be one half natural log of the absolute value of u, which is one half natural log of the absolute value of one plus x squared. 
just like I usually point out, I will point out here that we could drop the absolute values and you will see most solutions manuals drop the absolute values because one plus X squared is always positive. So typically we end up writing this as X arc tangent of X minus one half natural log of one plus X squared. Let's see. And that is the antiderivative or integral of arctangent of x. I would encourage you to, on your own later, try the integral of the arc sine of x. Or arc sine of x. I will mention it is very, very similar. You do the same sort of process, and then you end up getting an integral that also requires a u substitution. And in case you've forgotten, I'll remind you, in fact, I'll remind you over here, which I think it's worth knowing, the derivative of the arc sine of x is one over the square root of one minus x squared. And the derivative of arc tangent, even though I know I've already written down on this page, I'll write it again, is one over one plus x squared. And finally, the derivative of the arc sine, it's arc secant, is one over possibly the absolute value of x times the square root of x to the minus one. Although some people teach it where you don't have an absolute value of x, that works completely either way. So back to that comment I was making before, later on in like a week or two, we're gonna see that when we do trig substitution, if your integral has a one minus x squared, that means the trig sub is gonna be sine. And if your integral has a one plus x squared, that means the trig sub is going to be tangent. And if your integral has an x squared minus one, it means the trig sub is going to be secant. Which is kind of cool. And there's more to it than that, but like, I don't want to, we don't need to talk about it just yet. It's really because of how the trig identities work. Right, if you plug in sine for x, you get one minus sine squared, which is cosine squared. And if you plug in tangent for x, one plus tangent squared is secant squared. And if you plug in secant for x, secant squared minus one is tangent squared. So that's the reason why those are the choices for your trig subs. And again, you know, we haven't actually talked about trig substitution yet, but we're almost done. Um, you should probably stop. It's 150, since it's 158. Problem again with uh, the integral of e to the 3x times 2. Yes, totally. Thank you. You're very welcome. We didn't do natural log. We'll have to do that one on, on Wednesday. Yeah, and I was also curious because you said two or more functions inside an integral, but what about if there's three or four? Typically, so usually three or four. So really, I, I said or more to kind of cover my bases. It's usually just two types of functions. You you don't usually see a mixture of three types of things unless, yeah, I mean you could, but it's but then like so I'm trying to think of something now. Like, what if you saw something like oh, that's gonna be stupid, James. Um, Or maybe you had something like the integral of three or more, three or more, three or more. <laughs> maybe you have, I don't know, this is going to be stupid. I'm trying to make something up that's not going to suck. And I'm just, it's, if you're like e to the sine of x times cosine of x. I'm sine of x. But I want, like, that's only two types of functions, really. I want to get something else in there. I don't know. This one would be a u sub and then inverse of my parts, the way I've written this one here. But yeah. Yeah, usually it's it's really not three. It's usually just two types of functions. Also, now that you mention it, uh -huh. um, can you do integration by parts once you've done a yes you can so like you could do it with du and you right so here's so here's what i would say um in fact here's a here so here's an example of that question you just asked so let's say we were integrating this function sine of x times cosine of x times e to the sine of x dx if i was going to integrate that well that looks terrible i see there's a u substitution there so now here's what I'm going to do because I know what's going to happen. I'm going to do a U sub, but I don't want to pick the letter U because 
I like using you and he in my inverse my parts. I don't like it. I'm going to let you equal you with regard to you too. So I'm going to do, I'm going to use any other letter. I'm going to pick T. So I'm going to use a U substitution where T is equal to my sine of X. And then my DT is equal to what? Yep, cosine X DX. So here's my DT. And then I'm left with what? Well, I've got DT and then I still have a sine X times E to the sine X, which is gonna turn into T times E to the T. And now I'm gonna do integration in my parts because I have an algebraic thing times an exponential thing. And I didn't use it my U. I mean, you can totally let use it for U. People then kind of use W instead. But I'm so used to writing the formula as UV minus the integral of V to U that it's hard for me to think of it as like WV times the integral of V to W. So I kind of use my knowledge of what's going to happen. So then I would let U equal T for my integration by parts. And my DV is E to the T DT. And then my du is dt, and my v is e to the t. So then this becomes the so this becomes u times v minus the integral of v du, which then is going to be t e to the t minus e to the t plus c. But then I have to plug back in my u sub, like oh, but t was really sine of x. So this is really sine of x times e to the sine of x minus e to the sine of x plus C. But yes, you can totally have a U sub and an integration by parts. Does it feel like you're making an integration experiment? Oh, no, no worries. On like, on like the, something you wrote down in yeah. class here? Oh, sure. You're welcome to take a picture of it if you want to as well. That's also totally fine. Yeah.